Fort Chippewyan is a tiny hamlet located 223 kilometers north of Fort McMurray in northern Alberta. Fort Chippewyan has recently become a focal point in discussions regarding the Alberta oil sands. Claims have been made that upstream oil sands industrial pollution has led to serious health problems within the community. This video will provide an overview of the evidence of which these claims are based and an exploration of the concerns raised within Fort Chippewyan in order to show why further study into the community's health is essential. In 2009, Alberta Health Services released a study which found that relative to similar populations, cancer rates among Fort Chip residents happened to be 30% higher than expected. Although the study did not assess or explore potential reasons for the community's elevated cancer rates, it speculated that the rates could be the result of chance, lifestyle choices, or environmental exposure, such as industrial activity. When referring to environmental factors, the study specifically identified that potential environmental contaminants in the area and the absence of a general increase in cancer rates in the comparison communities warrant further study into the impact environmental exposures have on the community's health. Though many claim that the AHS study proved that upstream oil sands industrial activity was impacting the community's health, this was simply not true. On the other hand, many claim that the results were statistically invalid. Once again, the study's authors did not include this qualification. From the study, we can only conclude that cancer rates in Fort Chippewan are elevated, though reasons why they are elevated is unknown and thus warrant further investigation. For decades, industry has operated in the vicinity of Fort Chippewan. In the years leading up to the AHS study, Fort Chip residents began to express concerns regarding the impact of oil sands industrial pollution on their surrounding ecosystem. These concerns were corroborated by industry, government, and independent studies conducted at the Athabasca Basin before and after the study's release. As early as 2005, Fort Chip residents and medical officials began to express concerns over the community's high rates of cancers and autoimmune disorders. Let us now briefly explore the environmental factors the community of Fort Chip is exposed to. Over the last five years, a series of independent studies and industry reports have warned of the potentially adverse effects of oil sands development on the Athabasca watershed. In November of 2006, Suncor released a study that showed arsenic levels in local moose meat surrounding Fort Chip to be 453 times higher than acceptable levels. Residents found the study's results extremely concerning, as the majority of Fort Chip residents consume a traditional diet of local game, including moose. Their concerns prompted the Alberta government to investigate the matter, which led the province to issue their own study, finding arsenic levels in moose meat to be 17 to 20 times acceptable levels. The following November, ecologist Dr. Kevin Timoney released an independent, peer-reviewed study that assessed water quality and sediment levels in the Athabasca watershed. The study found unsafe levels of arsenic, mercury, and carcinogens present. Dr. Timoney would then team up with Dr. Peter Lee in September of 2009, to release another study with similar results to the first. The study identified the oil sands as the source of the high level of toxins. Although the results from these studies were alarming, it was not until the release of two major studies by Dr. Aaron Kelly and Dr. David Schindler that the issue was brought to the attention of the public at large. In 2009 and 2010, Kelly and Schindler published papers that found oil sands industrial activity to be directly contributing polycyclic hydrocarbons, which include carcinogens, mutagens, and teratogens, as well as heavy metals such as mercury and lead into the Athabasca watershed at toxic levels. However, despite the overwhelming evidence indicating that oil sands industrial activity releases dangerous pollutants into the Athabasca watershed, the Alberta government refused to acknowledge it. The government maintained that any contaminants found downstream from the oil sands were naturally occurring. We 
are in the process right now of reviewing our overall uh, uh, monitoring regime. Uh, the ramp that's been in place there for some time is, uh, has done an admirable job. There is a peer re uh, review underway that at this point in time, and, and, uh, and, and we, uh, we anticipate having the results. Of the basis for the province's claim stemmed from its own monitoring of the Athabasca watershed. The province heavily relies on the Regional Aquatics Monitoring Program, or RAMP, to assess the environmental impacts of the oil sands. RAMP is an industry and government multi-stakeholder collaboration. RAMP plays a central role in informing decisions related to oil sands development and environmental monitoring. Since its inception in 1997, RAMP has consistently reported that oil sands industrial activity has had no impact on the Athabasca watershed. Although the program refused to release its data, methodology, or scientific procedures. RAMP's lack of transparency and questionable findings frequently led to its criticism. In 2004, an external academic peer review of RAMP concluded that the program was plagued with major scientific gaps and had no ability to assess environmental impact of oil sands industrial activity. The release of Kelly and Schindler's studies, which contradicted RAMP's findings, was also a major blow to RAMP's credibility leading to the creation of federal and provincial panels mandated to assess the program's ability to adequately monitor the impact of oil sands development on the environment. In December 2009, the federal panel reported RAMP incapable to assess the impact of oil sands development on the Athabasca watershed, calling for a complete overhaul of the program. Months later, the provincial panel reported similar findings criticizing RAMP for its inadequate scientific protocols and confirming the results of Kelly and Schindler. In between the federal and provincial reviews, RAMP received another scathing critique from its second external academic peer review. Like the previous review, this one found the program to have met one out of nine objectives, the only objective met being commissioning an external academic peer review of the program. Having been publicly forced to recognize RAMP's deficiencies, the Alberta government called for a committee to study how to revamp the program and put in place a competent oil sands monitoring program. Analogous to the efforts of independent scientists aiming to have the Alberta government recognize the true environmental impact of the oil sands, Fort Chippewyan residents have for years attempted to persuade the Alberta government to launch a complete and comprehensive public health assessment of their community. Residents first began expressing health concerns in 2005 and were immediately joined by community health officials who were noticing abnormal rates of cancer and other autoimmune disorders within the community. The government initially refused to look into this matter, claiming that its record showed no abnormal health problems amongst Fort Chippewyan residents. The community, however, continued to push for a study. Finally, the province commissioned a study promising a proper and thorough year-long public health analysis. These promises were not kept, and in 2006, just months after the province's promise, a study was at the licensing hearing for Suncor's Voyager project, without informing Fort Chippewyan residents of the study's completion or results. Just as the province had previously claimed, cancer rates were not at abnormal levels in the community, though rates of lupus and renal failure were elevated. However, the province's health assessment only increased the community's anxiety following examinations of the study's results by independent health experts. For an unknown reason, the study's authors did not adopt standard public health analysis procedures, particularly when categorizing cancers. The study had separate categories for leukemia and hematopietics, although standard procedures would group the two, as leukemia is a form of hematopietic cancer. When separate, the rates of leukemia and hematopietics fell within the expected range. However, when combined, the rates were double what was expected. The community demanded a new study and assurance that the study would follow standard public health assessment procedures undergo an external peer review, include the perspectives of locals, and be truly comprehensive. 
Initially, the province refused these requests, but later relented with the release of the 2009 AHS study. And just as before, promises by the province to address all the community's concerns were not kept. The community denounced the study before it was even released. However, unlike the first, this study confirmed the community's concerns, finding cancer among Fort Chippewyan residents to be 30% higher than expected in relation to populations of similar size and makeup. The study did not investigate the source behind the cancer rates, though it identified three potential causes, chance, lifestyle, or environmental exposure. Environmental exposure referring to upstream industrial activity. The study's authors requested the province carry out an investigation into which of the three identified sources were leading to the community's high rates of cancers. The province refused, claiming that any follow-up study would be limited to investigating whether chance or lifestyle factors were leading to the community's health problems. Environmental exposure, despite what the study's authors believe, was immediately rejected as a potential source. This rejection was largely based on oil sands industrial pollution levels provided by RAMP. Today, although RAMP has been thoroughly discredited, the province continues to rely on its data to refuse to grant Fort Chippewyan residents the thorough and comprehensive health study that the community deserves. Talks between the government and community have led to an agreed-upon outline of what a new study will consist of. However, prior to commencing the study, the province has demanded the community sign a letter of intent acknowledging that the Alberta government is committed to addressing the community's health concerns. Signing the letter of intent does not require the province to fulfill what both parties agreed upon regarding what will be included in a new study. After having promises broken to them in the previous two studies, Fort Chippewine's leadership is holding out to ensure that the Alberta government will be true to its word and provide the comprehensive, independent and sound public health analysis that the community deserves. <laughs>